So next one's from Jim Lennon. So does Mantell versus Cross. Recent on story time with Dutch Mantell, he absolutely trash carrying Cross in his new angle. I'm a long time listener to Dutch's show, but he doesn't usually go off like this. No one of you guys know Cross and Mantell in real life. Do you know if there's some type of deeper issues going on here? Personally, I think this new faction with Cross has a lot of potential to be great. They look cool and tough. What else could, what else could someone need? Oh, do you have the clip, Joe? I didn't hear what he said. How long is it, by the way? It's eight minutes and 44 seconds. You want to too much. zoom through it or just? Right. No, just. Yeah, just go to the part we talked about Kevin Cross. For the whole thing. The whole it's, yeah. Well, it's, put, well, like, like, put like the first few yeah, minutes. First, or, yeah. Did yeah. you already hear it? No, no. Uh, uh, it'd be good if you would. Attitude on him. It's dead on arrival. He's already. I mean, the people are just not responding to him because there's nothing to respond to. I mean, if he's going to do anything, he needs to do something to somebody that the fans are about. I mean, going in there and I don't think the street profits, I don't think nobody Sorry. really cares about them. Yeah. I was going to say he's teamed with Authors of Pain and they attacked the street profits and Bobby Lee. Yes. Lashley, yes. But still nobody gives. And even Bobby Lashley is in there. There's something. Again, it's not up to me. I'm just watching it. And believe me, watching all this TV that you forced me to watch, by the way. Let me know if you want me to go forward. That's or... fine. I, I, I give you. Well, I've, okay. I've, I've said this about Cross for, from, you know, you know, he's a friend of mine, did great at NXT. Bro, he's been buried since they brought him up to the main roster, the first one, and put that helmet on him. And so, like, I don't think he's ever been rehabilitated from the fans connecting to that character. That's kind of funny know. because you were like, oh, I love the helmet. That's a great idea by Vince to market. Like, no, my whole point helmet. was if they were going to treat him like a gladiator and he's, like, beating everybody, I don't mind it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it's like, but you can't go out there and put a helmet on the guy. He goes out and loses to Jeff Hardy and can Keith Lee. Yeah, and, you know, dude, he lost, the, like, right. he lost to Jeff in, like, a minute or minute and a half, right. remember? So so he takes so 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 he went the first time he showed up to that's that's what his first run on TV. It wasn't the package with Scarlet and everything, the whole thing. So then he comes back and he doesn't he had hair. Right? And they put him in the you know, in an angle with like the top guys right away. Yeah. And it was like the fans aren't really buying that. Like, why why is this guy you know an NXT guy? <laughs> He's never had the character that he had from NXT presented on that show on the main roster. And I and the fact he got away from it, I, I wonder why why he did that, why he grew the hair, because that I still think that package was doable. You could have come back with with that package even after they had the helmet on him and stuff with with Scarlet. So I don't, I think that I I think that is like the main factor when he went up there his first run. I don't think the fans have have, have cared about him since. You know, when he went out there was like just doing nothing and had a helmet on. So I was like, I don't know. What about you, Conan? Yeah, it's kind of weird because <clears throat> he was built like a monster, a, a credible monster in NXT. And when he got to the main roster, he's our boy. So we were really, really happy. Comes out with a helmet looking like a... Yeah. And then uh, they have him lose really quick to Jeff Hardy. Okay. And you could say, oh, well, they're trying to test his attitude. Well, they don't do that a, a lot with other people, number one. And number two... Couldn't you have tested the attitude in NXT? Why do you bring him here to do that to him? So he started off on the wrong foot, but they reversed course pretty shortly and he started to win again. Then he was in a feud with Drew McIntyre, which for I don't know why it didn't click. Then he had the bad luck of being put in with Rey Mysterio, and that was over before it even started. Well, because Rey know? got hurt. He got concussed. Oh, was that it? Okay. Yeah, remember right. that's when Ray hit his head on the match during one of the matches. Okay. And so he had like, bad. Right. So he had bad right. luck there, you know. Had bad luck there. I think this, and then he grew his hair. I don't know why, because I think he looks thick without his hair. Okay. Right. And um, uh, and then obviously he kind of got let go, right? Because he didn't want to take. Uh, uh you know. Well, no, no, that was in the middle of him being when he came back with the, with the angle with Drew. He'd he'd been, he'd been let go because the. Yeah. Then he came back and went right into the thing with Drew, but then he had hair. Yeah. He came back looking right. different. You know what I'm right. saying? So that's what that's what I'm saying, right? Yeah, we could. Now, you know, we've, this, never, we've never seen the, his NXT character presented on that show. He looks 
crazy that, hair. Look, look, look at that yeah. picture, Di. He looks nuts. Yeah. You know, so. I know. I'm, I'm just saying that that, that character yeah. from NXT never had a had never got a run up there. And I think it would have been. I think that character would have gotten over. You know. So yeah. Well, let's hope this character looks good. He's got Scarlet with him, which is always a plus. Mm-hmm. He's got these two guys that you know they look good, and I disagree with Dutch. Yeah, I don't think anybody gives about the street profits but they do about lashley lashley's over like you know yeah. so hopefully this will be the thing that finally you get gets him back on the right track next is from white goulding subject is ease back i'm sure you guys have heard that Big E has now officially got the full medical clearance to return to the ring for potential new day versus new day versus imperium angle which is great to hear because he would suck it would suck if he was forced into retirement in such an engagement such a horrible injury my question for you guys is i'd really like to conan's opinion on this is it worth it I've never broken my neck, but I'm sure they never truly heal 100%. As much as I like the guy, Big E wasn't exactly on the level of Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns, or John Cena that a comeback would really mean that much at the box office. Basically, what I'm asking you guys is, do you think a Big E return would, would really even matter anymore? Um, I liked him. He's a good character. He's a big guy, too. You know, and he's over. Um, and plus, too, about the neck, bro, bro, me, the, the uh, medicine and stuff and everything are so advanced these days. You know, like, for example, Jack Eichel, uh, the guy for the for the Golden Knights, um, he's played for Buffalo. He hurt his neck really bad, right? <clears throat> yeah. They thought it was going to be a career-ending injury, right? And <clears throat> they found out that they could go through this new type of treatment, okay? And the Golden Knights wouldn't sign the guy on a leap of faith that that would work, right? So he was still hurt when they signed him. Bro, he came back, and he was probably like uh, – yeah, he. <laughs> they came back in a run. They won the Stanley Cup, and he was one of the best players in the playoffs. And he's one of the best players in the league, and he's, he's fine. His neck is fine. You know, they say it's funny too. They sh- they show him um, when when they're flying, like they they show the the guys getting on the you know climbing up the steps of the airplane for the charter, and he has one of those medical pillows with him. You know, one of those special pillows that are like uh, th- like he carries it and he sleeps. You know, like he still takes care of his neck. He sleeps on it like properly every night and stuff and things. So like yeah, but I. I definitely Big E, uh, you know, a, t- a lot of these guys have get injured and you get fixed and you come back. That's the way it works, you know. You know, I no, can't find. Look at, look ahead, at Ed. Sorry. Yeah, I can't find look anything. At Quinn Benoit, Rhino, um, a lot of guys. Yeah, Shabu. I, I, uh, yeah, Austin. I can't find anything that says Big E's coming back. Uh, White Goulding. I don't know what you got here. The last news from him is on Busted Open, where he says there's no timeline. I've been to a few different doctors who have looked over my scans. I don't have any issues right now, and I feel great, but I broke my C1 in two places. It's called a Jefferson fracture. And because of the nature of the fracture, it takes longer to heal. And initially, they told me three months, so I thought three months and I'll be back, but things ended up being more complex. I'm just trying to make the best decision for myself and my health moving forward. I don't see anything about him coming back there, guy. Well, this so. has been medically, is it medically, maybe he's medically here, but he's not coming back. I don't know. All right, yeah. next one's from Eddie yeah. Hogan. Next one's from Eddie Hogan. The subject is what EC3 said. On a recent Vince Russo clip, Russo and EC3 were talking about the whole silly Tony Khan and Jinder Mahal stuff on Twitter. EC3 was talking about, while he wouldn't name names, it was causing problems with people backstage in AW that he's in contact with. He also went on to say that once he had talks with Tony Khan about coming to the company, and Tony pitched some creative idea that EC3 didn't like. EC3 offered up another idea, and that was the last time they were spoken. The offer was rescinded. Conan and Disco, what do you think about Tony Khan in this story? I think this is a pretty childish look for him. Well, I don't know what the, the, he pitched, but uh, let me ask you a question, Conan. Are you free to answer this? Have you spoken to anybody uh, that works in AW over Tony Khan's tweets lately? And would you say that the reaction is like they don't care, or is it negative, or is it is what is it? Negative. It's negative. Negative. The, like the the, the reaction with negative. every person I talk to. Right. Interesting. Um. Well, that's not really you know. <laughs> it's not a surprise, right? Uh. <clears throat> next from John. Then Kamei- why do you ask? Nothing. Oh. John can make the subject is Monet Mark. Then reported the talks between WWE and Shasha Banks returning broke down because she was asking for the same or higher money that Charlotte Flair recently was signed for. And that because of that, Sasha Banks is either either or soon will sign with AEW. My question for you guys is, is this a bad look for Tony Khan? All of his haters have called him Money Mark for years and years, but right now the story just confirms it. WWE won't pay her, so she's just going to uh, for option two in AEW. And knowing Tony Khan, he will likely pay her even more than what she asked for in WWE just so they can feel like he's got a win. Well, that wouldn't be a win. His win would be paying her less. Um, paying her more, would, how is that a win? That's like the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I uh, think he means that a win for him is like she didn't go to WWE and he, she, came, he came, she came here. Well, that would be a win for, for them because they need a girl mm-hmm. like, you know, they, they, they desperately need female talent on that show. You know, credible looking female talent. 
like I'm sorry, but Riho is not a credible looking, you know. Yeah, Riho character be wrestling in the title, but I don't care. Right? They don't. They're not. They're not Sky credible. Blue, right? All those girls. Yeah. Right. Right. Um. So next is from uh, um, some Ganda Chanko. Except does, does Logan Paul need to do more? Hey, K100. So I knew Logan Paul before WWE because of him and his brother boxing. Just like everybody else, I've been really impressed by him. But recently, I don't find myself being very interested in him. If he's on, I'll watch, but I don't really miss him when he's when he's gone. Personally, I'm thinking he's a stronger storyline and something that goes beyond just viral moments in a good match. If the plan is LA Knight versus Paul at Mania, then I think they would both be a great opportunity to give both guys some much-needed depth from a character perspective. Do you guys think they could do more with Logan Paul, or do you think that the way he's been used has been the best use of him? Well, yes, it's been the, they've been doing great with the guy. I mean, he nails it out of the park every single every single angle he's in. You yeah, know, he just started I, something with KO, which is very good. Right. Yeah. You know, they're gonna have good. They're gonna have the KO show. Uh, right. Did they do yeah. that last night? Oh, they. I didn't. I haven't seen the show yet, so don't tell me what happened. But like, you know, yeah, yeah. He's doing some doing interesting stuff. I, I'm compelled. I watch him every time he's on. Like I'm compelled by his television. Yeah, because he's not on every week. Yeah, I think right. they're doing a good job with him. Did you see SmackDown, uh, Di? Yep. Uh, yes, I did. Yes. So Logan uh, next, on the commentary had had a little. Right. I like old school stuff, and it's right. just really old school for Logan to go. That KO has got a cast on that weapon. I'm not letting him use that. It's, you know what I mean? Right. I like, right. Uh, yeah. right. Um, the next one is from uh, this is the last one I'm going to do today. Here we go. Next one, Mike Hernandez. So is Dario Cueto booked better than TK? Uh, what's up, guys? Let's get to the point. Conan, what did Tony Khan do to the Lucha Brothers? Before AW, these guys are probably a lot of people's favorite tag team singles wrestlers. George Kittle, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and a recent K100 guest Chris Van Fleet were fans of the Pentagon Jr. from Lucha Underground. He's a lot of non-Hispanic fans that didn't even cut promos in English when he was in Lucha Underground. He had the widest of the white at Wembley saying his Seattle Meadow, Meadow catchphrase. And where is Ray Phoenix? Is he injured? Oh, yeah, Conan. What is the Pentagon curse? Is it true? Or did the former Pentagon just have bad luck? P.S. On Twitter, I told Feeney, he 100% forgot, to check out the movie Godzilla Minus One, since you guys say there's no good movies in the theater. Oh, I've heard about this movie. I heard it's supposed to be excellent. And before you kill my suggestions, this is a Japanese version of Godzilla, not the CGI heavy Godzilla made recently in the U.S. This one has a good story and great acting. Disco, go ahead. Check around Tomatoes and see how it's rated. Yes, this is rated good. I didn't check this out because I'm a huge Godzilla mark, and I'm definitely going to be watching this. Um, but, the, yeah, but what about the Lucha Brothers? Well, Ray, Ray Phoenix is injured, and what, what Pentagon. Uh, he remember he hurt his back in that match with Moxley, and um, I think oh, I thought he was just Moxley. selling. No, 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 no. He hurt his back really bad. Like that's wow. the worst injury he's ever had. So oh, he's really? hurt, and Pentagon f- suffers from the same malady that half the wrestlers there suffer from. That they don't know what to do with him. Right. You know what? Uh, he mentioned people that were big fans of uh, Pentagon. Uh, you guys know who D'Angelo Williams is, of course. Right. Yeah, Remember he had a basketball his, he, player. Yeah. Uh, football. But he had his uh he had a one match with impact and it was really good a few years ago. Right. But long story short, I spoke to him at an MLW a couple of years ago and he was super high on Pentagon, you know. So that's just to add to wait, let me add the second question here. What is the Pentagon curse? Is it true to the fortune former Pentagons just have bad luck? What's the Pentagon curse? Well, the first Pentagon uh, got like paralyzed in a match that I was actually in. Really? Uh, what was that the like? Sec- yeah, it was very scary because he's paralyzed and you don't know what to do. And then later on, when I met him a couple years later, he was actually like half blind and he was coming to the shows and asking people for money, which was very sad. Right. Um, the other Pentagon. I don't know. Something happened with him, and I'm not sure what it was because I was in Mexico. But there was like this curse, of, you know, that the guys that have the name Pentagon, something always happens to them. But nothing's ever happened to this one. So, uh, 